This is Charlie. Charlie uh, is very cute, but he likes to nip things that move quickly and he's reactive to certain sounds. In this video, I'm gonna go over the, how you can use the concept of counter conditioning to help a dog stop reacting to a sound. In this case, uh, we're in Venice. There's a, little, uh, there's a little courtyard here in front of the building and uh, definitely not gonna pet him for doing that. That's too submissive. Never pet a dog that's too submissive or too dominant because you're gonna be amplifying whatever you're doing. So basically there's a little courtyard and there's a gate that goes out to the street and we have uh, our very nice neighbor here who is gonna trigger the sound for me every time I say, uh, ask her to. Um, and Jody, can you hear me? So all I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, uh, I'll just say uh, action and that means to open it. All right, so uh, work out a command word. You don't always say now, 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 because after a while the dog recognizes now means the sound's about to happen. So uh, now I do counter conditioning a little bit different than other people. Counter conditioning is a replacement behavior. So what I'm gonna do first is, I'm gonna first uh, show you kind of a before. Charlie. Ready, Jody? Action. Now that's a very subdued version of it. Okay, go ahead and close it. There you go. That's a very subdued version of it. Normally, Charlie, we just had a delivery, a package delivered. He just freaked out and charged the door. He's barking and charging it and jumping at it. Now, what I want to do is I want this sound to actually indicate something good's going to happen. Right now, it indicates to him that something potentially bad's going to happen. Something just came into the area and now I have to be on guard. So what I typically do is I want to have the person there ready to do it. The timing has got to be really precise. So I started off a little bit different. That's not what I'm looking for, chipmunk, but I like the chipmunk. There you go. All right, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop the tree in his mouth, then I'm gonna have her make the sound. Now this is not how you're officially supposed to do it, I just find this makes better results. Ready, Jody? Action! And close it. Tail's a little bit lower, and then we had no response whatsoever. So I preceded the thing that happened with something pleasant, and then nothing happened after when the trigger happened. Oh, we're going to do it a couple more times. All right, sorry. I'll, I'll be real quick. I promise. Give me one more minute. All right, we got a timing. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this is where you want to go for trimer counter condition. I'm going, to, I'm going to give her the signal. She's going to make the sound, and then I'm going to give him the treat. Now, the dog can't react to this, but I'll talk about that in a sec because we, we only have her for a limited period of time. All right, ready? Action. And close it. door. That's good. Thank you, Jody. You rock. So basically, I would rep this quite a bit more, but Jody has things to do. So basically, what, uh, what we're doing for counter conditioning is we want to find a distance. Well, not necessarily a distance. I, I want to lower the intensity of the stimulus. In this case, the stimulus is the sound of the door opening. He has also reacted to uh, people coming by on skateboards or birds or people running or any movement, and that's probably uh, being uh, related to a border collie. And so basically, if uh, basically he sees that sound and he wants to react to it. So I do this uh, for sight, sounds, or smells. And the way I lower the intensity by is either increasing the distance, slowing down the speed, or turning down the volume if it's like a doorbell or something like that. We can achieve that by muffling, putting something over the sound maker. So basically you wanna find a distance far enough away where your dog, you can activate the stimulus without your dog reacting. And that is crucially, crucially important. So you might have to be like 25 feet away before you can have somebody running by where he'll sit and take a treat while the person runs by and doesn't react. Okay, so now we identify it's 25 feet. Now we're gonna to go to 24 feet and I'm gonna have somebody that's a runner or on a bird or whatever it is that I can, that control, I can control. Right, that's what we did it with Jody. So you have somebody else that's gonna be a runner. Okay, now, that, now we're at 24 feet. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have, uh, probably the first time I would maybe, first one or two times, I would give him a treat and make sure you're handing him the treat so that he's looking in the direction of the runner. So I'm holding the treat and this is the dog's nose. And so I, I give him the treat and then he sees the, dog, the runner just take three or four paces. And then we give him another treat and it takes three or four paces this way. So we proceed it with kind of like, I have this treat in my mouth and then I see it happen. So I don't, I'm kind of more relaxed in the situation already. I'm very comfortable with it. Then what I do is I have them take, run, and after he runs, then I give the dog the treat. So now running equals I get a treat. Instead of looking at the running as a threat or a potential danger, now it's actually a positive. 
And we achieve this because we've increased enough distance where he doesn't feel a threat, so he doesn't need to react. What we want the dog to do, and I hate to say this because it's not really accurate, but we can quasi-program the dog by having them do the same behavior over and over enough times. They kind of get into a habit or a behavior pattern, and they're going to continue this. Right now, you have this with him reacting to people. Right now, we, or eventually, we can flip that. So at, let's say we get 24 feet, and we now the guy is running back and forth, running, and then we give him the treat, and then run again, and we get the treat. Do that about three to five times in a row. And if he's not reacting, then we go to 23 feet and practice, then 22 feet. Let's say we get to 21, and he's having difficulty sit, sitting. Or when we put the tree, he's kind of looking around it. We're getting close to his breaking point. The key for this is he cannot react. If he reacts, it's invalid. All this, all work we did was invalid. So the idea is keep on pushing this, and now we recognize, oh, he's, he's having trouble sitting. He's having trouble taking the treat. This is probably as far as we can push today, or this practice setting. It would come back practice an hour. So we take note, okay, we're at 21 feet now. Okay, so we're going to back up to 22 feet. Have a good one. Always have a good one the last time you do it. So he mm -hmm. remembers remembers the last so the last memory engram is of something positive or the way that you want to behave. So then we uh, the guy runs at you know 22 feet, and then we get him the treat and we say, hey Bob, thanks a bunch. We'll see you in an hour. And an hour, then he, and then afterwards, if you can, pet him, uh, rub his belly, do some of the things that he likes. So afterwards, like man, it, it, it went really well. My guardian was very happy with me. And then afterwards, I have this amazing belly rub. Unless he's doing the submissive, so maybe for him, just scratch behind the ears or something like that. So, um, but if he, the last thing he remembers is a bad thing, then he's not going to want to do that either. Uh, if you get frustrated or he's getting frustrated, that's not a good time to do it. If there's a lot of stuff in the neighborhood, there's somebody with a weed eater or stuff like that, that's going to make it too hard. Again, I talked about cheating. I don't want to cheat, but I want to stack the deck as much as I can in his favor. So don't do it if you're frustrated or something else going on because you can trigger a response. And, event, and you want to keep these to short intervals. Maybe these are like 60 seconds worth of mm -hmm. practice or less. Usually people practice too far, then the dog gets bored, then it starts failing, and then we get frustrated. Because you were doing it fine before, why are you suddenly not doing it? And then the dog has a negative association. So uh, this is for the sound of the door opening. If I'm doing this with actual something that's going to be moving, Charlie, you learn this? This is not going to get it for you? Come here, buddy. Charlie, come here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pellet-like treat, this is salmon, I'm going to smash it so it's flat like a pancake, I'm going to invite Charlie to come over and eat it. So he's nibbling on it in a couple pieces. As you notice, I can kind of turn, he's going to follow it, and get him looking at what, it's easier if you're sitting up, buddy. Come here, Charlie. Charlie, come here. Come here. Charlie. There you go. Up. Oh. There we go. So now I can get him looking, whatever, <laughs> If he's cooperating and he's had a whole bunch of treats we were some other exercises off camera but I can get him to look whichever direction I want up or down or to the side so if I want to do this with like a bird or something like that what I would do is if this is the dog I'll pantomime and I have the bird across the street what I do at first the first part of this is I flat or smash that treat and I have the, him looking at the person he starts nibbling on it I smash it to make it nibble so it takes three or four bites to get it I say okay I want you to go as slow as possible just for this five feet so he, while he's nibbling on this treat, he's watching the bird go by very slow. Mm -hmm. Since it's far enough away and it's a slow speed, I don't feel immediate threat, so I don't feel like reacting. So we do this three or four times. Now, if you talk to anybody else about counter conditioning, they're going to be like, he's doing it wrong. That's not how you're supposed to do it. I just find once the dog is reactive, it takes so much longer to get the dog down. So I want to create a positive association at first. But it's important you only do this for a couple of times at first. The rest of it, should, the treat should come afterwards. That way, a bird approaching means I'm going to get a treat. A jogger approaching means I'm going to get a treat. Um, the sound means I'm going to get a treat. And it really becomes like almost a command word. All right, Charlie. And when you say bird, you mean bird scooter? I mean a bird, yes. The uh, bird, lime, jump, uh, all this fun stuff. Charlie. Look at all these treats over here. Charlie, come here, Charlie. How about one of these? Yeah, I thought that might get you to come. Bullies, bull penises, or uh, every dog likes bull penises. This would make a little bit easier contrast for you if you weren't a uh, black dog on the black rug. But <laughs> this is Charlie, and these are some tips and tricks of how you can use counter conditioning to stop a dog from reacting to things, sights, sounds, or smells.